Hey everybody, David Gear here. Welcome back. It is the Leadership Minute and today I'm going to talk about hurrying recruitment. What is hurrying recruitment? Well, a while back, organization I work with, we expanded from about 150 employees to 250 employees, give or take a couple, in a matter of a couple of months. We had no choice. We grew so fast, so quickly, it, it had to get done. And, uh, well, that also meant that we had to fill positions right away. We had to get positions, we had to get people, bodies in. And during that, well, things happen. Things happen. And some of them weren't so great, some of them weren't so hot. I'm not going to get into too much detail, but I will say that when we hurried the recruitment process, well, bad things happen. And they happen anywhere else. Usually the culprit behind the hurrying of the recruitment or hiring of individuals deals with uh, expansion, growth, uh, an increase in workload, uh, a sudden contract that now requires more people to come in and, and help out to do what the organization needs to do. So it's important to have enough people to, to deal with it. I understand that part. We all understand that part. We have to have enough people to, to deal with the expansion, the growth, the sudden growth. <clears throat> but when we fill those roles, well, like I said, it could be a problem. It could be a huge problem. See, recruitment, when you hurry it up, when you speed it up, well, you end up hiring the wrong people, people who are not cooperative, people who are not productive because they're not cooperative, people who are unskilled because they, they'll fudge the the resume or the application process, they'll fudge it, the application, and when it comes time to do the job they were hired to do, well, they're unskilled and they can't do it, thus rendering them ineffective. And in the long run, it will render that organization ineffective because, again, they've hired people that cannot do the job. <clears throat> now, there's going to be some times where you're going to hire people who are just not up to par and they're going to need some training. So that's fine, no problem. Everybody's got to get trained. Everybody's got to get trained in the way the company or the organization does business. That's understandable. But when they have to get trained to do their basic core functions, then then there's a problem. And then that's where problems begin and that's where problems linger. And when problems linger, well, you know what happens? They fester. Problems fester and that's not a good thing. So see how do you address this issue well it's simple time i know no one has enough time no one will ever have enough time but there has to be time to accurately define the need so accurately define the job if you've had issues with the way the job description was written now is the perfect time to, to weed out the bad stuff in the job description and put in what you want in there because again Having an accurately defined job description, well, it not only serves you because you know what you want, you know what you're going to get or what you expect to get, but those that are applying also know what they're, they're going to be called on to do. So that makes it two-sided win-win. Now, unfortunately, there's not enough time to accurately find the right individual because, again, growth new projects, things are happening, we've got to get this position filled in two months, and they've got to be up and running, going in two months, otherwise we're going to be in trouble. We're opening the doors, we're opening the doors whether or not we have somebody on board, and we'd rather have somebody on board. But now this leads us to the old, what's the lesser of two evils? Who is the lesser of the two evils? I mean, both, let's just say there's two candidates, and they're both not the perfect candidate, but they are the best of the bunch. What's the lesser of two evils? And unfortunately, those decisions get made that way. And unfortunately, if you don't make time now to find the right individual and to have the right job description and, and, and the right want known and understood by everybody, well, then you're going to have to make the time now because I guarantee you, you're going to make the time later. When, a time, when the time comes to get rid of that individual and uh, start the hunt all over again, to start the hiring process all over again. But of course, I'm not telling you anything new, but what I am saying is you cannot hurry the recruitment process. You can't. So how do you deal with this? Obviously, there's going to be hiring supervisors. There's going to be other managers, other individuals involved, especially you as the owner of the company. In the small companies, you are not. You, you are the manager. You're the owner. You're the manager. You're also the hiring supervisor. You're the HR. 
your everything. But in the larger, small companies to mid-sized companies, now those, they have a couple of department heads and those individuals are gonna be working with them. So how do you prevent this from happening? Train, you train everybody, you train, train, train all the time. Make the time to ensure that everyone gets trained, including the new hires, or not just the new hires, but the old timers. So they understand why this expansion is going on, why this sudden growth is going on, and what are going to be their new expectations. Because the first thing I, I know, the first thing I heard is, well, isn't that what the new person is supposed to be doing? No. Everybody's supposed to pick up the slack. The new person is just added on because of the increased workload that's going to be spread across everybody's table, on everybody's desk. Everybody's going to get increased workload. But it got to be so big that we need another body, another two individuals in there. A situation like that does and does, did and does exist and will continue to exist. So again, train people. But do not hurry the recruitment and hiring process because, again, you're gonna, it's going to suffer. Your organization will suffer. Those individuals that are hired will suffer. And you, as the leader, are going to suffer because, again, they're going to blame you because the buck has to stop someplace, and they will blame you. Listen, folks, this has been the Leadership Minute. My name is Dave Guerra. Until next time, have a good one.